What's up guys? So I did a gel test yesterday with these 140 grain uh, Maker T-Rex bolts and the 7 Rem Mag. So I did a ladder test with these with this virgin brass. This is PPU brass because I'm cheap. Um, and I worked up to 75 grains of magnum, which was putting me at 3,250 feet per second. So it was cooking. Yesterday I went to confirm that load and I made kind of a rookie mistake. All this brass was virgin brass. Now it's all once fired. Um, in my head, I was thinking, you know, do a 2,000 shoulder bump. Now the brass is fire formed. Kind of forgot that you have to fire the brass twice to fire form it. So I gave it a shoulder bump when I should have just neck sized it. So I probably pushed it back even further from than it was from the factory. Because yesterday when I went to chronograph the loads, um, I picked up 80 something feet per second. I went from 3,250 to 3,330. And I was having a hard time getting the shells out. So you can see it will focus for me. Come on. There's a little ring on the brass. There we go. Right here. So bolt lift was okay. I mean, the primers don't look super flat or anything, but uh, it was hard to get out. So, and point of impact also shifted. So I'm going to pull all these bullets that I had loaded and reload them, drop down a grain or two. Um, but I did get a gel test in, so I'll show you the gel and uh, we'll take a look at the results. Alright, so here's the gel blocks from that 140 grain T-Rex bullet. So the bullet entered here, tracked, nice wound channel that carries pretty far. It's hard to tell because it kind of gets lost in this wound channel. Um, that was from the 100 grain Raptor bullet from the 308. Tracks through here, and as you can tell, it's still pretty big. You can see how it was spiraling through the gel, and the bullet stopped right there. So that bullet stopped. It's kind of hard to tell. I turned the lights off in here so you can see the gel better, but we are at... 27 and a half inches or so so definitely a nice wound channel um if you want to look at this was the the spear hot core bullets which are obviously more explosive you got a cup and core and then that's the t-rex so the t-rex though i mean it opened up pretty much instantly and that permanent wound channel carried pretty far which is what you would expect for a solid copper on um, the slow-mo the temporary stretch cavity is not as impressive as the spear bullets but the other thing is is my camera is not a real slow-mo camera so i might not have captured the perfect screenshot of the temporary stretch cavity at its maximum expansion you know if you're a frame or two off um you know a millisecond that cavity could already be collapsing on itself um so let me dig out that bullet and we'll take a look at it all right so here is that maker bullet i'm surprised it held on to all of its pedals at 100 yards this was impacting at 3080 feet per second with 2950 foot pounds of energy um, like i mentioned I, these are definitely over pressure they shouldn't be going that fast um, but it's a good way to test them to see how they're going to hold up so 138 and a half we lost a grain and a half so it's probably just from the polymer tip let's see how wide she got we got 0.69 that way, 0 0.74, 0.76. All right, so massive expansion. That's like almost three times expansion there. That's awesome. Very impressed with this bullet. Um, for an all-copper bullet, I definitely like these. They get much wider than your Barnes type of bullet. So we'll see if I can shoot a deer with these. Um, like I said, I'll be taking this gun with me hunting if I can actually get these loads developed in the next week. I'll be going down to North Carolina hunting some open fields, so this bolt will be definitely good for that, but my 300 Win Mag will most likely be my primary gun, but it's always good to have a backup. So, Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and like always, please like and subscribe.